Hello everybody, my name is Alan from, from CyberLab and today will be another video about TrueNAS. Not only TrueNAS, we're gonna start to explain a little bit more about the TrueNAS scale as the system now is a stable version or release version and now you can use for production. In this video specifically, I will show about uh, permissions, permission for users, permission for group and how to configure it for different applications. In the previous video, I show how you can create a data set and this data set we set up only for one specific user. What is not good if you have more than one user or you work uh, in a company with three, four, five or either more users. And in this way, you want to set up groups or you want to set up uh, user permissions specific for each application. So in this video, we're gonna show it. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like Consider to subscribe for the channel and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before I start to explain how you can create permissions for using groups, we're going to understand what system that you are working. I'm using TrueNAS Scale Revision 20.02.4, where it's the latest one that I download. Also, this system has a 16 GB of run memory. According from recommendation the website, they say that it's recommended to have at minimum 16 GB. So we have over space. If you look here, they are using 2.7 GB of uh, service where it's not installed any application yet. So once that I start to use all the application, everything, you're gonna start to use more run memory. Other thing, we have already one pool that has been created in the last video. The pool is named its home. Here I have a four cores and I have a network connection, otherwise you'll not be able to access this system. Here in my storage, I have my data and my applications. Other thing that I need to remember that uh, in the last video, I create a user called Sauber. And once that I create this user, they create a Sauber group. But uh, we're gonna delete everything and we're gonna create a proper use and a proper group. So first thing that I'm gonna do, I will delete and I delete this group and I come here and delete this user as well. So now what I can do, I need to start to configure it. First thing that I suggest you to do is to configure the groups and then after this one, we can add the users. First group that we're gonna configure it, it's home users, so home users, I could put any name, but I want that everyone that's uh, work in this company or in this situation can access everything that's inside these home users. I will select some authentication and put save. Now this is my first group that I create and all the permissions that I will add is that they have access for one specific file and this folder, everyone will have access for it. Other thing that I will create supposedly that I wanted to create a HR fo folder. So we'll put HR Samba and put save. Next thing that I will gonna create is financial. What's the idea? Imagine that uh, HR have some uh, information for all the users or all the people that work in the company and I don't want that no one else have access for it. In the part of financial have some classified information how much money that make and only the financial people can access it, not everyone. And that's the home user everyone will have access. So now we will come here in local users and that I will define some local users. I can come here, add, and now the first user will be a home user, only to be easy. And I create my password. it and now I don't create a primary group I will select this home user will be part of the home user and now I put uh, save if I want to have a Microsoft account it means that I needed to have authentication set up for a user and the Microsoft and also I need to have my email and my user exactly the same otherwise not work but now we're gonna put save. So now I create my first user, home user. The second user that I will create will be HR. 
and they write create my name and I put my password. Now what I'm gonna do, create a primary now, I will come here and I put that's a primary group HR. But I can have a second group that the second group will be home users. So in this way, HR will have access for all the information that home users has, also will have the HR user. And now I can put save. Less user that will create its financial. So we'll do the same for process. They will create here, put my password. Primary. So this first group will be part of financial and the second one will be home users. And now I put save. It means that at the moment, all the users have access for all the permission for group home users, but HR have a specific for HR and financial have a specific for financial. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna come back in storage and we're gonna define some information. First, I have the data. Data, I want that everyone have access for it. I will create a new data set where I will put that uh, this data set called HR and I put save. And the last data set that I will create will be financial. So now I have uh, three folders. First one, I will configure the data where I want that all the home users and everyone will have access for it. So I come here and permissions. The last video, I only defined that uh, home users will have permissions to read and write this one. So I don't want to have it. I will edit here and we'll set up an ACL. Here in ACL, we have um, a create a custom, but I want to select something that I already create. In this way, I have an option to get open. If I come here and select and continue, it means that everyone will have access for this folder. What I don't want, because if others or someone that is not have properly access for this system will have access for all the folders. So what I want to do, I want to check others' permissions. So now I put here, set up, and I will set up as a restrict and try to understand restrict. If I put continue, it means that only the roots have access for these folders and others don't have access for anything and others don't have access for anything. It means that only that means or the roots will have access for the, those folders. What it's better because I want to do it, but let's see the rest of the permission. So now I will check the home and I come here home and now it have a similar configuration for restrict, but all the others have a permission to read and is it good? They cannot write anything. It means that all the users and the group for root have access for read and write, but others only have a permission for read and execute. If I come here, let's only modify for root here again and apply first of all, come here data and let's continue to modify it. So now in ACL, we can come here for admin and check what they say. It means that only admin have access for those folders in both ways and no one else have access for write, only to read and other for the group 544 have access for read and write. So now what you're gonna do, we're gonna select the restrict, what in my opinion is the best one for most of the applications. So set ACL, select as restrict and put continue. In this way, only the root have access for read and write and object have read and write. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add a new item. Here new item, First one I will add as a mask and I will put read, write and execute. Next one I will create for my group. So I'll select group, group, come here and I select group call home users and I put read, write and execute. Permissions, I put OK. I wanted to permit all the subfolders and apply for permission for all the child parts. In this way, if I put save, now all the home users will have access for these folders. Before we go to the network and start to test it, let's configure everything and that's after we can modify it. So next step, we're gonna go for financial. So if I come here, permissions, they have a root and root read and write. We're gonna modify it 
set ACL and we're gonna put as restricted the same way that we did for the data and I put continue here appear the same information we're gonna add first the mask where we wanted to add permission to read and write and the second one that we're gonna add will be the group and now because we are looking for financial we look for the group financial and I apply the same way that we did last time and apply and put save before I put save I just forgot to put read and write so we're gonna select read and write for all the uh, group and put save now the second that the set has been configured let's do for the last one so I come here permissions edit set and I will put restricted and I will do exactly the same but I will look for the HR group so at the first permission for everything at the second one permission for everything before I forget group and I go for group HR and I put the same way for permission for all the subfolders and come here because those folders or those data set is empty, will not make so much difference, but once that you have a lot of files inside this one, it's worth to look on this configuration. Now, data, financial, HR have all the configuration. If you want to check what you configure, you come here in permissions, and now you can have an idea of what permission that they have. Now let's check what kind of permission that we have. So if I come here and open my share folder, so if I come here my network, I can open my TrueNAS. But let's open exactly the same IP address. So we'll put here, two, two, three, eight, and I try to open. First time that we're gonna access it, we need to get your account. So HR, and I will put my password. Why? Why I want to choose my HR? Because I want to show that HR have access for the folder called data and as well in the part of HR, but don't have access for the data set called financial. So I will come here and put OK. And now appear the data where I can open. I can create new folders. I can create a new items and everything. But if I come here, they only have data. You know why? Because we didn't finish configuring our share folders. So if I come in shares, here in Windows Samba, SMB and I put add. Now I will select my folder called financial and put save. And now the last one I will select my folder called HR and put save. In this case, if I come here, I'm using uh, default parameters. Depend on what kind of application, if you principally want to have uh, authentication using Microsoft, you're gonna need to look for mood protocols. But in our case, we're gonna put all link the uh, share parameters so in this way i don't need to save come here in my network and i put f5 and appear everything so the same thing i have access for my data i don't have uh, access for financial and i have access for hr the same thing i can create any item that i want but i cannot access the financial but imagine that this person for hr needed to for any reason access some specific folder inside the financial but only that specific person. I don't want that all the HR have access for it. So I can come here in my storage, financial, data set, modify, and now I will create a new item. So I add an item, and in this case, instead of be a group, I will put a user, and we select the user call HR. I want that have permission to read, write, and execute, and I will put save. Financial don't have any file. I didn't need to put all the child parts But if you don't do it will not work properly. So now I can open my financial I can come here and create different folders and do everything that I want The idea to set up groups and users in TrueNAS scale It's really similar the idea to set up in TrueNAS core and this ACL is not only dedicated for TrueNAS You can do in OpenMediaVal and in other applications of course, with some limitation, depend which kind of uh, program that you use. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.